take your Bible this morning and turn to, to the book of Nehemiah. <clears throat> the book of Nehemiah. Before I preach this morning, I just want to say uh, thank you to, uh, to everyone who called, checked, and uh, sent us cards and brought food by the house. Uh, it sure was good. And uh, it's good to know that you loved, amen. And uh, me and Gina said this from the very first day that we ever stepped in Appalachian Baptist Church. Everybody's made us feel loved, and uh, and uh, from from everybody, and uh, y'all sure did uh, didn't disappoint during COVID. Uh, so I just want to tell you personally, thank you uh, for the prayers and the cards and the food and everything. It was it was amazing. Nehemiah chapter two. I'm gonna read one verse this morning. If you would stand for that one verse, Nehemiah chapter two, and verse number five. Nehemiah said, and I said unto the king, if it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. Father, we pray that you bless the reading of your word. And Lord, this morning we come for one reason, one reason only, and that's to lift up the name of Jesus and and Lord, just uh, glean from your word this morning. Lord, we pray that you would remove us out of the way. Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your spirit. And Lord, that you would be lifted up, that you would be glorified, that you would draw all men, women, boys, and girls unto yourself. Lord, now we ask that you would bless the reading of your word. In Christ's name, amen. I want to begin, you may be seated, I want to begin this week, the Lord help. And this morning I want to preach on a, a message to uh, Nehemiah, a man of action, uh, but I want to begin a, a series today that I've called Working and Worshiping Together. Working and Worshiping Together. Work, working and, and worshiping together is, is not always easy, and it'll be impossible if we try to do it without, without the Lord's help, and today I, it's just going to be an introduction to to the series, and I've been thinking about the year ahead and been thinking about the direction and the vision that, that the Lord would have us go in the coming year. And, and I believe that this is the thought and the theme uh, for the year. I don't know if Appalachia ever has themes or thoughts for the year, but, but this year you're going to hear a lot of, of the word move. Move. And with move, you're going to hear return, rebuild, and renew, move, return, rebuild, and renew. As we saw in the book of Ruth at the end of the year last year, and uh, we saw that Ruth and Naomi went down and, and their families, or, or Boaz, Elimelech took their families down to Moab, and we know all that happened there. Uh, but we also know that they died, and, but we know that Naomi decided that she wasn't going to stay in Moab. She decided because she heard that the Lord had visited her people, they, they were going to move and go back to Bethlehem, Judea. So they didn't stay in Moab. They moved back to where the God was blessing. They moved. They returned and rebuilt and renewed. See if this sounds familiar. What that church needs is, you fill in the blank. I believe our government, I, I can't believe our government officials. If I were there, I would, and you fill in the blank. Our schools are in, in really bad shape. Someone ought to do something. Gripers and complainers and, and self-proclaimed prophets and armchair quarterbacks, they're a dime a dozen and they abound. 
It's easy to analyze, it's easy to scrutinize, and it's easy to talk about the problems that, that are in the world and in the church, but, but really we need people that are, are not just willing to discuss the problem, but they're willing to do something about it. Amen? We, we don't need more complainers and more scrutinizers. We need people who are willing not just to talk about a situation, but to willing to, to get on board and, and actually do something about it. And Nehemiah was a man of action. Nehemiah saw a problem. Nehemiah saw uh, his home place in distress. And, and instead of wallowing in his self-pity, instead of wallowing in grief, and instead of wallowing around, having feeling sorry for himself he took action in other words he returned he moved a little backdrop of what's going on here. This is the last historical book of, of the Old Testament. It's, it's written around 430 B.C. And it shows how God uses burden laymen, people just like you, uh, to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And at the end of 70 years of captivity, a group of Jews returned under Zerubbabel and built the temple. Then comes a gap of about 58 years during which Esther was, was chosen as the queen and, and saves the people. Ezra then leads a, another group back where a revival and reform uh, takes place under his leadership. Notice again, there's a renewing. About 13 years later, Nehemiah come become burdened for the city, and he's given permission to return and rebuild the walls. The temple was completed earlier. Now the walls needed to be constructed, and the walls needed to be put back up for defense in unity rebuilding. We'll see throughout the book of Nehemiah that he was organized, he managed, he supervised, he encouraged, he, he was met with opposition, and he, was con he confronted injustice. But here's what he did. He kept going. He kept moving until the walls were built. Nehemiah was a man of action. Nehemiah is one of the great examples in the Bible. He's one of the great examples in the Bible of, of men who used all the ingredients of, of biblical success. You know what those are? Prayer, planning, and perseverance. Prayer, planning, and perseverance. These are all evident in, in his life, and, and we'll notice that in his character, in his concern, and in his common sense. First of all, this morning, we see his character. We see Nehemiah's character. In this passage, we, we see that, that Nehemiah's strength of, of character was solid because of his study of God's Word. Nehemiah, was a, 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 his character was built off of what he gleaned uh, from the Word of God. Notice, first of all, he was carefully devoted to duty. Nehemiah was a man who, who didn't take his duty lightly. He took it seriously. He was a, the cupbearer for the king. A cupbearer in, in that day was historically an, an officer of, 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 uh, of, the, uh, of a high rank in, in the royal courts. He was, he was a person of importance in, in the royal court. His duty was to, to pour and to serve the drinks at the royal table. Out of fear of poisoning of the king, this person must be regarded as, as thoroughly trustworthy in order to hold this position. And Nehemiah didn't take that position lightly. His position as cupbearer had been, had been greatly valued. His whole life up to this point was, was in preparation for what God was going to use him for shortly, his role shortly that God was going to use him as. You may be walking through life today and, and you may have been your whole life wondering, okay, Lord, I don't understand what's going on, but you know what God's doing? He's preparing us for the roles that he has for us to do in the kingdom of God. 
We may not understand it. We may not know why we had to go this direction to get this direction. But God has a plan, and it's all preparing us for what he has for us to do. Nehemiah uh, was, was, uh, was uh, 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 careful about his duty that God had called him to do. Second thing we see under his character is that he was fixed. His integrity was fixed in his motives and his purpose. Nehemiah was a man of integrity. Although Nehemiah had served in the, in the palace, he'd been under all this royalty and, and been in the palace serving the king. He'd spent a lot of time uh, in the chambers of the king, no doubt, but it did not compromise his integrity. Brother Frank hit on it some this morning about Washington. How many good men leave our states and our places and go to places of political power and their integrity is compromised? Men of God in this building today, let me speak to us. It ain't Father's Day, but let me hit us real quick. Let's be men of integrity. Amen? If we're going to build a church and, and we're going to reach this kingdom for God, we're not going to do it compromising our integrity. Nehemiah was fixed in his integrity. His motives were fixed. His, his purposes was fixed. Even though he had spent that time in the palace, it didn't compromise his integrity. His motives were pure and his purpose was sure. He was, he was going to do what, hey, listen, his motives were right. Let me ask us this morning, what are our motives he was motivated. Nehemiah was motivated by the fact that he feared the Lord. That's what should motivate us men to do what we do is because we fear the Lord. Amen? We ought to have a, a respect and a fear for the Lord. He was, he was loyal to the king, Nehemiah was. He was loyal to the king in the palace, but his main purpose was to serve King Jesus. And you know what? Our main purpose ought to not be to serve uh, and, and, and in, uh, be influenced by men on this earth, but to serve King Jesus. Listen, we ought not be serving Jesus today because of political clout. We ought not be serving Jesus today because it moves us a little one wrong up the ladder to where we think we ought to be. We ought to be serving to Jesus today because of the fear that we have for him and because we have a purpose to glorify King Jesus. That ought to be our only motive for serving him this morning. Not only do we see, um, yeah, but we see in his character practical goodness, practical godliness. Practical godliness is, is essential to the Christian life. Nehemiah had it. Listen, it's made up of pursuing, uh, pursuing spiritual disciplines that are both personal, Bible reading, praying, fasting, and also relational. Nehemiah had a personal time with the Lord. Nehemiah had his personal godliness and his practical godliness in his own personal life, but Nehemiah also had relations with others because of his integrity, because of everything that made him up in his character. He was able to reach the king and get things done. He was a man that loved his country and his God, and was willing to do the duty for both. He loved his God and his country, and his duty to both was what his, his motive was. If we're going to move, if we're going to return and rebuild and renew, we need people with the character of Nehemiah, carefully devoted to our duty. We need men who take their duty seriously, Women as well. Can I stop for a minute and say to us, deacons, Sunday school teachers, if you hold a position at Appalachian Baptist Church, let me just go ahead and put it that way so I don't leave nobody out. It's not a position by name only. If you're serving on the deacons, and it's just because you want that title tag to your name, please resign after the service today. 
It's not, for, it's not for political power. It's not for just to have a name tagged on to us. It's because we're here to serve God Almighty. And that should be our motives is, is to serve God. And, and we need people who takes our duty seriously. We need people who, who are not just going to serve as deacons to say, I'm a deacon at Appalachian Baptist Church because I believe God's going to look at us and say one day, so what? What did you do for the kingdom of God? We need people with, with character in Nehemiah who's carefully devoted to their duty, who's fixed in integrity in their motives and in the purpose. And, and we need men who serve because of just practical godliness. And then secondly, we see Nehemiah's concern. I believe this is what would describe Nehemiah. Burdened, troubled, and saddened, and concerned. I believe that's how Nehemiah could be described when we meet Nehemiah in the book of Nehemiah. Listen, when, the, when, when there's a revival of God's work, when there's a revival that takes place, there is someone like Nehemiah who has had a burden for the work. I was thinking about some people in the Bible, and as I was preparing, I was thinking about Moses. Moses, he, he, counted, the tre- he, didn't, he, did, he counted the treasures of the world as nothing for the opportunity to work for God. Nehemiah was in Pharaoh's palace, was he not? He was there. I mean, he, he could have stayed there, but, but he, taught, he thought that the work for God was more important than staying in the palace. Like Moses, he, he, I mean, he, he could have stayed there and worked, but, but God didn't call him to stay in Pharaoh's palace. God called him to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. What's God called us to do? We can sit around and, 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 and just remain still. But God's called us for a purpose. Like the disciples, he was, Nehemiah was willing to give up his family and his occupation to follow Christ. As a church, what are, what are going into 2022, what are we willing to give up to follow Christ? What is it that's holding us back? What is it that, that we're not willing to release in order to serve the Lord? All of us has got something that's holding us back. And we need to relinquish that to the Lord and allow him to use us for his honor and for his glory. Listen, we sing it all the time. I surrender all. And most of the time we're all lying when we sing that song because we're not really surrendering all. There's something that we're trying to hang on to and we need to give it to God. We need to be like the disciples and like Nehemiah. We need to be willing to sacrifice this whatever it is and give it to the Lord like Christ. Nehemiah was willing to be made no reputation to bring glory to God. He was willing to lose his reputation for the cause of Christ. Nehemiah was willing to leave the palace and, and go and start a work of rebuilding the walls for the sake of being, hey, listen, he could have been made to look like a fool. Who's this man going out here to rebuild a wall? He hadn't made the palace, but he chose not to worry about his reputation and to bring glory to God. David said, is there not a cause? David said, is there not a cause? Every great work of God begins when a man of God is willing, listen, to leave his wealth for the walls. Are you willing to leave your wealth for the walls? Are you willing to leave behind the things that are most precious and blessed to you in order to go serve the Lord? Listen, can I be real this morning? It's fixing to get real, real quick. Have you, I mean, I don't watch the news a whole lot, so I, I don't really keep up with it. I mean, it just, it's just depressing. But persecution and trials is coming our way. And can I, all these people that's been faking it till they make it, that ain't going to hold up. We need to be genuine. Man, we need to be on our face 
before the Lord. Listen, these altars during the week. Listen, this church is open from 8.30 to 4.30 every day. These altars ought to be filled with people crying out to the Lord because, listen, this thing is going to get real, and we need real, genuine, uh, born-again believers who are willing to stand. Hey, listen, I want somebody to lock their bows with me that I know has got my back. Amen. Willing to leave wealth for the walls. Willing to leave behind whatever it is that's holding us back to go build the walls. We need men who are, who are weep over wickedness instead of just whining about it. We need men who will, will get on their knees before God and begin to cry out over the wickedness that's going on in our world. We need men who will work with energy. Not jaw service, but elbow grease. We need men who will work with energy, with the goal to relieve the reproach of the people. That's what Nehemiah was doing. That's why Nehemiah was going to build the walls, is to relieve the reproach of the people. We need men like that in our day. And then the last third thing we see, his common sense. <laughs> Ain't a whole lot of common sense going around these days. He mixed agonizing with organizing and found the secret to success. Nehemiah was a man who, who prayed. Nehemiah was a man who planned. Nehemiah was a man who organized. And Nehemiah was a man who worked. We accomplish the mission for God when we depend on God. We complete the mission, accomplish the mission for God when we depend on God for strength. We need God's strength. But you know what else God wants? He wants us to step out and do what he's given us the ability to do. Amen? We can do it with his strength, but he needs us to be willing to step out and do what he's called us to do. The first part of the book of Nehemiah shows how Nehemiah worked. It, it also shows how God expects us to accomplish the jobs that he's called us to do. If you don't hear nothing else I hear today, hear this. Men look for better methods. Men look for better methods. God looks for burdened men. Men tries to find a better way to do things. God's just looking for men who's burdened to do something. May God raise up heroes of faith from this generation for this generation. If the work of God and the people of God are brought to reproach, It'll be because we fail to do the work that God's called us to do. If Appalachian Baptist Church is brought to reproach, it'll be because we failed to have the burden and to do what God has called us to do. Let me say this today to us as a church. Let's enlist in God's army today and fight the good fight of faith. Would that God that we would give the us that He would give us the same zeal to see the work at Appalachian Baptist Church that God listen that God complete that work that the Jews had to see the walls rebuilt. I want that same zeal to see God do a work right here in Greer, South Carolina that Nehemiah had when the walls got rebuilt. Does God have a vision for us? The question every search committee asks any candidate for any position, what's your vision? I don't have a vision. I say, well, preacher, you heretic. My vision's God's vision. If my vision's anything other than God's vision, it's bad eyesight. We need to have God's vision. Does God have a vision for us? Sure he does. There's walls to be rebuilt. 
God still wants his people to, to be united and trained to do his work. As we recognize the deep needs of this world and our community, God can give us a vision and a desire to build whatever it is he's called us to build. And with that vision, we can mobilize others. We can put others to work in the kingdom of God and put an action plan into place. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20 says this, for the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. For the kingdom of God does not exist, consist in talk, but in power. What's needed, and I'm done, what's needed is warm hearts. And willing hands. What's needed at Appalachian Baptist Church in Greer, South Carolina is warm hearts and willing hands. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we introduce today Nehemiah, Lord, his willingness to work. God, I pray that you put that same burden upon our hearts at Appalachian Baptist Church. Lord, that whatever it takes, whatever sacrifices it takes, Lord, that we'll be willing to lock elbows with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and get on the wall. Lord, I kind of feel like Nehemiah. I'm tired of walking over the rubble. God, give us a burden to see Greer, South Carolina, one to you. For the cause of Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's stand together.